Okay, so with the following video, I am going to be talking about some of the tips to leave uh, a relationship with a borderline or a um, a narcissist. So, um, one of the first things, uh, of course, is to, and this one is uh, repeated quite often, is that you should keep a note or a log of all the uh, instances in which you have been uh, abused. So you can just do this uh, on your phone uh, uh, through a notes app. But my spin to this is uh, not only take notes, but also record uh, the audio uh, of the interactions with your uh, BPD or with your MPD. And uh, you might not think that uh, you would hear anything abusive, but once you actually are out of the fog and you listen back to those interactions, you will realize how manipulative and how um, abusive this person actually uh, is um, so it was extremely useful uh, for me uh, to actually uh, uh, build the rationale and the evidence to to the validation to believe that this was a, an abusive relationship and i just wish that i had started recording uh, much earlier because uh, we had even much worse uh, interactions before i started to kind of gray rock uh, this person uh, the idea to record uh, my interactions kind of came from uh, hearing about this case about Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp, uh, the actors. Uh, essentially, Johnny Depp was in an abusive uh, relationship with a uh, highly likely uh, BPD or uh, MPD. And uh, uh, he luckily had the wits to kind of record the interactions with this person. And you can clearly hear all the gaslighting, the <laughs> manipulation, and Johnny Depp is trying to be quite rational during those conversations. And it really kind of, uh, when I was listening to that, I kind of brought, uh, it reminded me of my own interactions with my BPD and MPD. And that's why I kind of decided to 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 record uh, the, the interactions that I had. And the beauty of recording is that it's really raw. You get to hear the tone of voice. You get to hear the way you're speaking, uh, the way you're interacting. So that's definitely uh, helped me out a lot. But then my point is, uh, after you, my second tip is don't look for uh, validation forever or you'll never leave. You know, I mean, you can stay in this relationship for years, uh, building a repertoire of, uh, of uh, instances in which you have been uh, abused. So it is useful to, of course, talk to friends, talk to family, uh, post uh, uh, your story on Reddit and trying to, or whatever groups to try to get an opinion from people. And that kind of helps you reinforce the rationale that, okay, you're not crazy. Actually, you were abused. But don't dwell in it forever. Otherwise, you will never leave, you know. And and this is something that I think a lot of people do, including myself. We stick around and you're thinking, okay, next time. Or you're thinking, okay, I hope she does something terrible so that then I will leave, you know. And you never actually leave. So you need to kind of realize that you, you need to, you just need to pull the plug and you will never have enough evidence, you know. But if your gut is telling you that you're in an abusive relationship, if you're looking at what emotional abuse feels like or psychological abuse feels like, if you're looking at uh, videos about MPD or BPD, then you are in an abusive relationship. You don't need much more proof than that, you know. Normal, healthy relationship. People in normal relationships are not Googling uh, why does my partner do this and that? Uh, or they're not Googling uh, why uh, do I feel abused? So you don't really need much proof. So stop at some point looking for it and just and just leave as hard as that sounds. Then my third tip is to be prepared for actually ha what happens once you uh, uh, initiate the breakup, you know. So I think a lot of people uh, have a good understanding of how the dynamics within the relationship work. Uh, they have an understanding of what uh, trauma bonding is and so on. Uh, but I didn't, uh, at least for my case, you know, I thought, okay, as when I leave, then everything will be okay, you know, and it's not. When you leave, things get really tough. When you leave, that's really when you will be put at the test. Because these people, uh, people that suffer with the BPD in particular, they really suffer um, fear of abandonment. So essentially, when, when, you, when you leave them, when you abandon them, and this is likely due to some childhood trauma with potentially parents, uh, not being present, uh, when once you leave them, uh, this will uh, initiate this visceral uh, fear, this visceral uh, uh, trauma, and uh, and they will uh, try everything to l make you stay. 
they will put on the best behavior the best behavior you know they will give you all the highs they will uh, uh, take care of you they will uh, uh, clean the house they will cook they will buy you gifts they will give you the best sex you ever had they will do everything they will apologize they will tell you that i'm going to therapy they will do absolutely everything so then it's really hard because you're sitting there and you're like oh uh, actually this person is quite good you know but you need to know that the moment that you go back um back together you know and they feel safe again maybe one week two weeks it will all start again so this is why i actually think it's it's okay to kind of uh, they say that you know in order to break up with a borderline and uh, or an mpd it takes several attempts but it's important that you start on those attempts because then you will realize uh, that actually nothing will ever change yes maybe they put on a perfect behavior for uh, a couple of weeks but then they digress back to who they really are and you need to kind of have proof of breaking up several times in order to uh, understand this otherwise there's a risk that you will feel an extreme sense of guilt once you break up uh, that uh, you um, that you missed out on this uh, on this uh, opportunity um, and then my my final point is uh, to uh, kill uh, your empathy so this comes both whether you left the narcissist or the borderline or whether they discarded you uh, once they hoover back uh, or if they hoover back you know you need to show them no empathy uh, and what helped me was just once I communicated that I wanted to break up one of the many times uh, of course all the hoovering started again and the fear of abandonment but then I what really helped me was uh, to look at this person in a detached way to not get emotionally uh, involved in the crying in the in the desperation but rather kind of try to switch off my emotions and look at them as a person that had abused me a person that had hurt me a person that had shown me no empathy and saw saw me at the lowest points of my life and uh, and in that way i was i was able not to feel empathy or compassion for this person it wasn't easy of course because i am quite an empathetic person empathic or empathetic uh, so what i would do is i would maybe run to the bathroom and you know look through my list of uh, the abuse that i had uh, underwent in during their undergone during their relationship um, so you might have to do that at least in the beginning uh, instances of the uh, breakup or of the discard as well um, just to remind yourself of the of the rationale uh, because you don't want to slip because if you slip and you tell them uh, and you forgive them or you show compassion compassion then you will be back to scratch and you'll have to initiate again the process of breaking up which to be honest is not fair to that person as well uh, because it's a painful process to go through you know so you need to kind of rip off the band-aid um and uh, and maybe my final tip is you know stop stop looking for excuses. There's never a good time for breaking up. This is in all relationships. It doesn't matter that you have that holiday planned. It doesn't matter that you have that family gathering. It doesn't matter that you have a terrible housing situation. Um, you should just uh, just break up and uh, and that's the best for for everyone. Thank you.